Hi, I'm very happy to be here today. Um, today I want to speak about data integration and data integration from a statistical perspective. So at this conference, we've heard so much about big data from so many different domains, um, from genetics, proteomics, molecular biology, medical imaging, neuroimaging, population health, mobile health. Um, there's tons of these databases online that they've already collected many forms of data, taking many different measurements of different biomedical markers on the same set of subjects. The question is, how do we take all of this data and put it together to make sense of it in one statistical model so we can make inferences about what's really going on in a particular patient or a particular biomedical system? So let's think for a second about the Cancer Genome Atlas. I'm going to use this as a motivation today for what I'm going to talk about. The Cancer Genome Atlas um, is a huge effort sponsored by NCI and Human Genome Research Institute, and it's profiled the molecular um, components of 33 different cancer types, over 11,000 patients. And if we look at this type of data, the data that comes out is huge and massive. For every single type of tumor sample, there's multiple types of molecular profiling that's run. And all of these types of molecular profiling, think somatic mutations, gene expression, microRNA expression, methylation arrays, all of these different components are part of the same biological system. But currently, in statistics and machine learning, we often take one of these individual data sets and analyze them separately. For instance, analyzing gene expression separately from analyzing copy number variation, and things like this. But, of course, we know that all of these are part of the same biological system. We want to put these together in a model to make joint inferences. But this is a challenge. Because this data is very heterogeneous, just like Susan said uh, in the introduction, so some of this data is continuous, say, methylation array data. Some of it is count-valued, say, RNA sequencing that measures gene expression. Some of it's binary-valued with somatic mutation data. So all of this data is not just um, kind of big. This is many <laughs> thousands of biomarkers that we have here. But each set of biomarkers can be of a different data type. So how on earth do we put these together in one big joint statistical model so that we can analyze this? And that's what I really want to get to today. Um, so this is an area that I call statistical data integration. And I define this as using some type of probabilistic model to jointly model multiple types of measurements that are taking on the same set of subjects. So this Cancer Genome Atlas data is a perfect example of where we want to do joint inference. We know that all these types of molecular profiles that we obtain on tumor samples are part of a big, complex molecular system that gives rise to cancer cells. So how do we put the data together to make these types of joint inferences? And of course, there's numerous advantages. The first is, say we want to make inference about uh, clinical outcomes, patient outcomes. Um, we want to harness power across all these multiple data sets to make better inferences. Um, we're going to gain a lot of statistical power by doing this. And also, of course, we want to look at the biomarkers themselves and discover relationships between biomarkers that we might not be able to see by looking at just one type of data separately. And we can think about this for other types of data as well. How do we put electronic health record information together with medical imaging, together with genomics, so that we can make joint inferences about patients and about health? So um, there's possibly many ways that you could think about going about doing this data integration. I'm going to talk about this with network models. So network models are great. They mimic the kind of complexities of biological systems that we see. They're great for visualizing big data. And specifically, I'm going to do this with Markov networks, a particular type of networks, because they are a very strong probabilistic model that correspond to a joint multivariate distribution here. These types of networks are undirected graphical models that where there's an edge between two um, nodes in a network corresponds to some type of relationships between those biomarkers. 
So in terms of what's out there for these types of networks and modeling different types of big data, what do we have? So the first is a Gaussian graphical model. Many of you might be familiar with this um, from gene expression. This is often used to model regulatory relationships and pathways among genes based on gene expression data and microarray data. And you see an example of this here. But of course, these days, people are using RNA sequencing technologies instead of microarray technologies to profile gene expression. So this is a very nice model to model networks based on microarrays, but what about RNA sequencing? There's another type of model out there, the Ising model, that um, is, is designed for binary valued data. So perhaps we could use this to model somatic mutations, you either have a mutation at that spot in the uh, genome or you don't. And this might be a way to model that type of data. But and there's also um, some very limited models that connect these kind of binary valued and these Gaussian valued variables together. But what about all the other types of data out there? Think RNA sequencing, which is count data. Think of all the mobile health data and population health data that you get, text data, geographic data. How do you put this together? How can we draw inferences and connections between these different types of variables? And so our framework that we're going to work with is we introduce graphical models via exponential families. The key assumption here is that we assume all conditional distributions are exponential families. So for those of you that might not remember, an exponential family is all of those distributions that you know and that you love, hopefully, if you're a statistician, you love them, um, from your introductory stat class, like the Gaussian distribution, Poisson, Bernoulli, negative binomial gamma, yada, yada, yada. So all of of those are exponential family distributions. And it turns out by making this simple assumption that your conditional distributions are from exponential families, it turns out that there's a joint multivariate graphical model distribution that has a very nice closed form with very strong statistical and theoretical properties um, to put these together. Okay? And so with this type of new model framework, instead of just working with Gaussian and just working with binary variables, now we can do networks with count variables, networks with skewed variables. And this opens the door to doing networks from things like RNA sequencing data. Here's an example of a Poisson graphical model that we learned from RNA sequencing data on lung cancer. Okay, so lots of different things. But so now we've got some pieces together. We can build networks. We can get a proper distribution for all these different types of genomic data. But again, we know they're all part of the same big biological system. And we want to do inferences on relationships between these different types of biomarkers. So how do we do that? And so the framework we introduced for this, uh, we call block-directed graphical models. It makes the same key assumptions, conditional distributions from exponential families. And the variables need to belong to some type of group and know the directionality. There's a lot of math, which I'm skipping. Um, I was really excited to see the previous talk had, had quite a bit of math equations in there. I'm, I'm sparing you the details in my 12 minutes here. So dot, 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 a lot of math. And there's still a joint distribution that exists over these mixed types of variables that has very strong statistical guarantees. So what this really looks like, these types of graphical models look like this. We can have different types of data in blocks that are homogeneous, say a block of continuous value, think gene expression data, a block of binary value, somatic mutation, um, a block of methylation array data, and we can put those together. We can also have mixed types of data in the same model that we put together and draw inferences over. So, um, and, and this it very closely follows the biology that we know, where, say, somatic mutations affect gene expression and methylation affects gene expression, this kind of block directionality here. So this is important because um, this is the first type of multivariate distribution that's been introduced that directly can model dependencies between mixed data types. Okay, so that means this, before this, we couldn't take count data and binary data and put them together in the same model and conduct inference over them. But now we can. 
Okay? And here's um, kind of an example of when we take this to the nth degree and apply this on a big scale to big data, this hairball, I hope you can kind of see this, is um, kind of all the genomic interactions that we see in glioblastoma. And they're colored. It's kind of hard to see the colors there because there are so many millions of biomarkers in this hairball here. So uh, we can kind of zoom in and see this is a, a toy case study on breast cancer looking at relationships between somatic mutations and gene expression based on RNA sequencing data. And we've circled some novel discoveries from this um, network here that you can see. So we, we are able to take these different types of data and put them together in a joint way to make inferences. So, uh, so far we've worked a lot with cancer genomics on this, and where we're going is to push this quite a bit further and say, why don't, um, instead of just putting uh, different types of molecular profiling together, what about other types of biomedical data? So I'm working with some people at UCLA, and what we have there is neuroimaging data, specifically functional MRI data on autistic teenagers, and we have whole exome sequencing. And the goal is to understand what SNPs and how the genome is affecting brain function, and specifically, how is it affecting the brain in a systems level the functional brain as the subject is awake and thinking and, per and performing specific tasks. Um, we're also looking, you can imagine some other databases on neuroimaging. You can do this with structural MRI. The ADNI Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative has a ton of structural MRI um, uh, scans on Alzheimer's patients as well as whole exome sequencing. Um, Cure Epilepsy Database is getting um, more information on EEG data for epileptic patients as well as whole exome sequencing. So there's all these databases out there gathering different types of data, and this framework will allow us to make joint inferences on how we can put together this uh, disparate types of biomedical data in the same framework. So just some uh, quick acknowledgments here. I definitely want to acknowledge my collaborators um, in blue, who are my theoretical computer science collaborators. And my collaborators in red are my bioinformatics and oncology collaborators. And more information on my website. Thank you very much.